Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm reviewing the Yes Welder TIG 205DS and I put it through a whole battery of tests. I did some stick welding, TIG welding, welded some razor blades, ran it on 120, 240 volts, and I tried out the high frequency arc starting 100 times on this plate. So I'm going to show you what happened in all those tests here in just a minute. But let me tell you how this came about. Yes Welder reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to review one of our machines? And I'm like, absolutely. So they sent me out this little TIG machine. And this is available online for about 260 bucks, so you could buy about 20 of these for the price of a machine that I've, you know, used on a, a regular basis. And that just opens the door to welding to so many people, and I think that's really cool. So I was excited to try it out and see what this thing can do. Let me show you the set of accessories that came with this thing, and then we'll get into the test. Okay, so I'm going to spare you the unboxing here, and I've just laid out all of the accessories that it comes with. It did come in a box, you can take my word for it. So the machine itself appears to be really well made. It has a nice metal case, the sheet metal work on it looks good, um, it has good quality paint and graphics on it, so, you know, it, it looks like a quality piece. It has a cover here over your controls, and then a digital readout for the amperage, as well as a switch to go between the stick and TIG. Now the torch, we'll talk a little bit more about the torch and assemble it in a minute, but a few things that are different on this torch than other machines in this price range, a lot of them come with a European style torch that has a finger button built right in. I don't really care for those style of torches, that's more of a personal preference thing, but this has a standard number 17 style torch, and that's the most common air-cooled torch that'll come with a machine like this. And it has attached to it a finger button. And I like that because it's attached with some, some zip ties here and I can move it around uh, a little bit to make it more comfortable for me to use. Along with that finger control, it came with a separate foot pedal. Now this isn't a foot pedal that will vary your amperage, it's just an on off switch, but that makes it so that you can grip the torch however is comfortable for you when you're sitting at a bench and use the foot pedal to initiate your arc rather than that finger control. And for me that's huge because I like to hold my torch in a few different ways and oftentimes using a finger control just gets in the way. So this is an awesome accessory that they included with it. Now in addition to those standard consumables, they sent me an upgrade. This isn't included with the machine, but it is from Yes Welder as well. And it's a stubby gas lens and call it body kit. And so this has a wide variety of accessories for the torches. And we'll use some of these when we put our torch together. I'll show you that in a minute. It includes an adapter so you can use the common outlets for 240 and 120 volts here in the US. It came with the ground clamp that you need that has the DINs connector to mate onto your machine. And uh, while it's a, a formed steel connector, nothing too special here, it does have copper contacts on both sides with a strap that goes around. And that's going to make it ground out just quite a bit better than the ones that are standard stamp steel. Now as with most TIG welders, you can use this one for stick welding also. And it came with the electrode holder that you'll need. It's a pretty standard electrode holder with a DINs connector and a good gauge cable. And the last thing it came with is a hose to connect your machine up to your gas regulator and flow meter. Now there are three things that you'll need to get up and running that didn't come with the machine. One is an argon gas cylinder, and you can get that from a local welding supplier or gas supplier that you should be able to find online or in the phone book. Uh, second, you're going to need some tungsten electrodes, and third, you're going to need a gas flow meter regulator. So I'll link those things down in the description so you can find what you're going to need to get set up and going. Let's go ahead and set this thing up, fire it up, and see what we can do. Okay, now I need to go ahead and assemble the torch. These are the consumables that came with it, and they uh, will definitely be adequate for the job. However, they did, Yes Welder sent me this consumable kit that has stubby consumables. And what I mean by stubby consumables is if you look at the length of the original cup and you look at the length of this cup here, you can see it's about a whole inch shorter. And this makes things a lot easier to use. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble it with this kit that they sent, and I'll put a link below because I think that's a really good upgrade that'll help you quite a bit. Now it has both uh, what's called a standard call-up body, and that uses a cup like this where the gas will just come and flow out, and that's a pretty standard setup. 
but it also has a better setup uh, for a lot of things. It's not better for everything, but most of the time it is, using a collet body called a gas lens. And they use these little bit larger cups. And what a gas lens is, is it has this little mesh screen here that acts as a diffuser to help the gas come out smoother. And that can be really helpful, especially if you're welding things like stainless steel. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it with this stubby gas lens. Now on the front of the torch is this part called an insulator. And you can see this one has a taper to it. The insulators for a gas lens have a lip on them. You can see right there. And so I'm gonna use one of those. Now before I put my insulator on, I went ahead and slid my gas lens in here. And you need to make sure that this presses all the way down so that this ridge on there fits down inside of that lip like that. Mine was a little bit of a tight fit, so I had to press it pretty hard to get it in there. But once I did that the first time, now it fits just right. And then assemble the gas lens. Now, whether you're using a gas lens or a regular collet body, it's a good idea to put that on before you put the hardware in the back of your torch because it will tighten all the way down. Now that I have that in there, I'll take my collet and I'll put it with the split part to the front, down inside, and then I can drop my tungsten electrode down through. You can also put the tungsten through from the other side as long as your back cap isn't all the way tight. So then I'll take my back cap and I'm gonna use this medium length one. So here's the cup. I'm gonna be using a number six cup here for uh, this work here today and I'll go ahead and thread it down. You can see how it fits nicely on that insulator. And then I'll extend the electrode about a quarter of an inch out here and that should work pretty well for this gas lens kit. Okay, so I'm gonna tack up these 1 8 inch thick coupons, and you can see how that high frequency arc starting just made it real nice to, to light up an arc, and I got a good tack on there. Uh, sometimes you do have to touch the tungsten electrode to the material just to, to clean it off a little, and then you'll get it to strike an arc real nice. So uh, anyway, another nice tack on here. I'm just putting together this T-joint to run a fillet weld along here and test out the capability of the machine, how it runs on TIG, how smooth the arc is, and I'm going to try to put a bit of time on here. So we'll do a fair bit of welding here today. So I'm moving along here. You can see I'm just maintaining that consistent angle and short arc and adding the filler right into the pool. And we'll take a look, and we got a pretty good result here. So uh, definitely happy with that run. It's good and consistent. Uh, there, that was running about 120 amps on that fillet weld. Here I'm just running a flat bead on plate just to get a little more arc time and uh, see the machine run. Now, you saw how we had to touch the electrode there to the steel and, and get it to strike an arc, and I just wanted to make sure that the high frequency arc starting here was pretty good. So I decided, you know, what better test to do than to just strike up the arc a hundred times. And out of that whole 100 times, I think there were only twice I had to touch the electrode. And I had an old Miller uh, welder that would do the same thing. Um, it's really not uncommon and not something unique to this machine, but just a tip uh, if you have issues with that when you get the machine. So I'll go ahead and run this fillet here. Uh, it's running along pretty well. I had the filler kind of the wrong spot there for a second, but uh, we're back on track here. And running along, you can see we're still maintaining that 120 amps. now. On this one, I'm going to stop in the middle of the coupon and uh, just keep, uh, you know, reposition the camera, try to get another view, and take a look at it there. Now uh, I'm going to take a pause and crank my amperage up from 120 to 160 amps just to see how this is at the higher end. And that's going to let me weld a little bit faster. And honestly, when you turn it up like that, sometimes you reduce your overall heat that you put into your part because you're not camping out and letting that heat soak in, you're able to move a bit faster. So we're just moving along here, just testing it out, and it's still going just fine, so uh, we're welding along. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. Right there is 120 amps, there on 160 amps here in the later part. You can see it's a little more consistent, I'm a little more comfortable running there, but either way you can get about the same size uh, fillet weld just by varying your speed. Now let's change it over to stick welding mode, or MMA, manual metal arc welding, and uh, I'm going to turn it up to 150 amps and run good and hot with this 1 8 inch 7018 electrode uh, here on these 1 8 inch coupons. So I'll run a foot weld along here and strike up an arc, 
get established and move back into the start of the joint and then just weld along. And I'm just trying to maintain that consistent steady angle and a really short arc length as I move along here. I'm welding along at a pretty good rate uh, just to keep, you know, reasonable size fillet while still letting it fill out uh, so that I don't have any areas of undercut or where the metal in the base has been melted away but hasn't been filled back up with the filler metal. So just trying to maintain that balance there and it went pretty well. Got a good consistent stick weld on it. And that's a really nice feature uh, to, to have so that you can just take it with you without taking your gas cylinder or if you're doing structural stuff sometimes it's a bit faster. So chipping off some slag and, and cleaning it off a little bit with a wire brush we can take a look here. And I got a pretty good uh, 7018 stick weld there so I'm happy with that. Now to test this thing at the low end, I'm going to be welding these razor blades together and I'm going to do three sets of these just to, you know, see how consistent it is and how well it runs. And this is a pretty good test down at the low end of the amperage range. We're running right around 15 to 20 amps on these tests and I'm just using some 30 thousandths of an inch MIG filler wire here to fill in the joint. It's some stainless steel MIG wire. And so I ran that first one. You can see I burned it back a little bit at the start. I'm going to see if I can't do a little bit better on that in the future. That's something that uh, might take a little practice since I don't have a variable amperage pedal to, to creep in on, but definitely maintain really good control at that lower amperage. So we'll go ahead and try uh, one more here with this filler metal. I'm just laying it right in the joint and maintaining uh, the the filler metal in the in the pool rather than dabbing it in and out in this case and sometimes that works well uh, sometimes you need a dab near a filler metal it just depends a little bit on the application but I'm running along you can see at the start there it went quite a bit better as I, I got used to the, the machine a little bit and here at the end you'll see what I'll do is I'll just hold my torch there to maintain some shielding gas flow on the weld now the post flow isn't as long as I'd hoped for uh, on a machine. It's not adjustable, but that's definitely not a deal breaker. Not too big of a deal. I mean, I, it's just amazing that you could do that with a machine that costs $250. That just wasn't even an option when I, I got started. So that's that's just awesome. We'll run another one. I sped up the video here uh, just because we watched a lot of this and we got good penetration once again. So definitely a capable machine from that point of view. Now let's go ahead and plug it into a 120 volt outlet just to see how it runs there because that may be all you have available or if you take it with you. So I've set it to 80 amps um, just to not overwhelm my electrical system in my uh, garage here. And so I'll go ahead and strike an arc and uh, let it cool up and you can see I'm running just a little bit slower here on this 1 8 inch plate running at 80 amps but I'm still able to run a pretty good bead. So it's definitely something that you'll be able to do. Uh, we'll finish up here with the weld and then uh, zoom in and just take a quick look here and we got uh, got a good result so it's definitely capable of 110 volts. Hey well I had a ton of fun working with this little machine today let me wrap up by summarizing some of the things I really liked and what I didn't like about this machine. I like that it came with a standard number 17 torch that had a finger control and a foot pedal that way at the bench I can be a little more steady using the foot pedal but if I'm working under a vehicle or something like that, I can use that finger control without having to worry about where my feet are. I liked the high frequency arc starting. It worked really well. It was very effective and it's a lot nicer than using lift arc or scratch start TIG. I like the simplicity of the machine, especially for a beginner. There's only one knob on it, right? So you don't have a whole myriad of adjustments to have to worry about. You can just worry about that one amperage adjustment and you're good to go. I like the dual voltage. It can run on 120 or 240 volts and I tried them and it works really well on both. I know it didn't come with the machine, but I really like the stubby gas lens kit that they sent me. I've been using stubby gas lens kits for a number of years, and I've had them from a number of different manufacturers, and uh, this one worked really well and gives you a good little set to get started with. Wanting for was a little bit longer post flow, which is when your shielding gas continues to flow after welding. Seems like there was a little bit of post flow, right? It kept flowing for a second, but I, I would have liked a little bit more time. But that's really it, and that's definitely not a deal breaker. All right, so at the end of the day, what do I think of it? Well, at the $260 price tag, you get a lot of bang for the buck. I had a great time working with this little machine. It can definitely get the job done. So if you're looking for something in this price range, an entry-level machine, check out the link down in the description below to this welder. As well as down there, I have a tutorial that I put together about TIG welding where I go over everything a beginner needs to know in plain English. So check that out as well. And if you want to continue to learn more and up your game in welding and fabrication, go ahead and click that subscribe now and we'll see you next time.